We have present in the month of Ramadan. Now, depending on which way you look at it, if you look at everything always through a dunya vi nazar all the time, okay, and everyone's always pleasure seeking, they always want to seek some pleasure, then Ramadan for those individuals could be and may be a burden. Because all they're thinking about is fulfilling their nafsi taqaza all the time, eating, drinking, and so on. Whereas, alhamdulillah, uh, Ramadan for us is more of a spiritual thing rather than anything else. I gave you the example, right, where you have these type of life coaches, okay? Because I'm in the field of life coaching, counseling, and so on, we can basically charge hundreds and hundreds of pounds for a retreat. People go, they come to our retreat, we give them funny, fluffy lectures for five days, six days. They all feel hyped, they go back home. Easily, 500 pounds, 1,000 pounds, you can charge people. And people are happy to pay because they're thinking, when I go, I'm going to feel sukoon. So this sukoon I'm feeling, this comfort I'm feeling, that's that's worth something. Now for us as Muslims, honestly speaking, I don't think, I mean I'm talking about myself here. When it comes to fasting, I'm very gumzor. Alhamdulillah, other things, I'm I'm not saying I'm good, but I'm relatively better. But when it comes to fasting, I myself, unfortunately, I'm quite weak. So if it wasn't for Ramadan, I doubt if I would optionally fast as much as I would. You know, I doubt it. Even though knowing the religious benefits and the spiritual benefits and the science benefits, I still would fast less because it's something which I opt not to do, okay? Because of the discomfort perhaps in fasting. I understand that, look, going without food, drink and so on, this is something which is contrary to human necessity and that's what makes it a struggle. However, remember one thing, Allah Ta'ala never told us to do anything which is beyond our capacity. He knew what insan need. First of all, let me ask you a question. Who, who said this, that you have to have three meals a day? Who said this? And you have to have morning, lunch and dinner, and in between you have snacks. And Who, who said this? Who thought of this up? These are things which have been made, but and people just go with the flow. Why? Because everyone else is doing it. We also have to do. As Muslims, we have to question everything and say, hold on a second. Food, we don't, we don't, we're not, we're not. Food is for us to live. We don't live for food. Or oh, there are some people, they wake, they think of everything. What are we going to have for breakfast? Now what are we going to have for lunch? Now what are we going to have for dinner? And have this, all these little in-between things going on. It's like your whole existence is food. And let's be honest, right? When it comes to Ramadan, the general discussion in the homes is what should we have for iftar tonight? What should we have for iftari? And these are the general sort of discussions. Keep in mind one thing. Human beings even before Islam, have been fasting for a millennia. People have been fasting for thousands and thousands of years. I, I, I'm, I look, obviously I believe human beings came from Adam alayhi salam. That's my belief, okay? That's my belief. But when you talk to, say for example, certain uh, people who take the view of a certain science background, they'll say that we came from a, a common ancestor and then we evolved and our ancestors were like cavemen and so on. Okay, I don't believe that, but according to them as well, human beings didn't always have access to food. A person would eat, go hungry for two, three days, then go and get food again, then go hungry for a couple of days. So this keeping hungry is part and parcel of so-called human life from the beginning. Allah Ta'ala knew what was benefit for insan. This is All a Muslim has to understand is this much. Allah Ta'ala didn't send us any silly rules. Nothing is silly. There's some, look, for example, I'm gonna t- I'm, I'll talk about this on another time. I'm, why, why in Islam do we say qat'ul yad? Why do we say the punishment for thief is qat'ul yad, cutting hand and so on? It may seem a bit barbaric and a bit thingy according to a modern day lens, but I'm going to talk about this. Everything has hikmah, everything has wisdom. And Allah Ta'ala mentions as well, yeah, that in that, Allah mentions that, وَلَكُمْ فِي الْقِصَاسِ حَيَاتُ يَا أُولِي الْأَلْبَابِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ There is actually life in that, not death. It seems ironic. Life in killing someone? How is that possible? Like I said, we'll talk about that another time. I can't digress. I'm talking about Rosa here, right? So people have been fasting for a millennium. Now what happens is, people generally, you know, they, they, we, 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 can get, we can get moved to a certain extent when it comes to the fadila. So for example, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, مَنْ صَامَ رَمَضَانَ إِيمَانًا وَحْتِسَابًا غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمِ مِنْ ذَنْبِهِ That individual, whosoever, male or female, fasts, for the sake of Allah, and also having hope in ajr from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Iman and wahtisaba, in the condition of iman and with the, with the thing that I'm going to be rewarded by Allah. That's ihtisab. What will happen to this individual? 
غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِن ذَنْبِهِ Any sin you've done in, the part in your life will be forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Providing it's حُقُوقُ اللَّهِ not حُقُوقُ الْإِبَادِ yeah, This is the difference. Okay, like someone do zulm on someone, you need Allah khair salah, I'll keep a few roze. That doesn't work that way, I'm afraid. You've got to ask Allah for forgiveness. First you've got to ask the person for forgiveness, then ask Allah for forgiveness. When it's حُقُوق Allah, Allah can forgive, it's up to him. However, there's also rewards for taraweeh. There's also rewards for fasting. It mentions that individual, if you were to give someone, a fasting person, a drink of food to eat, you will get the same reward as that person who fasted. So someone fast, right? I fast, he fast. Actually, it reminds me, and I'll share this lovely incident with you. A scholar who, alhamdulillah, I'm very close with, he mentioned this example of him and his father. In them, they used to open their roza in the masjid, their fast. And what he used to do, they used to go to the masjid together. The mum used to give him a kujur or two, a date, and give the son a couple of kujurs. They used to go to the masjid together, father and son. Then what he would do, the sheikh would do, the sheikh's father, he would say, but look, that kujur you've got, why don't you give me your kujur and I'll give you mine? Do you understand? Give me your dates, I'll give you mine. Because once your mum gave you those dates, they, they're yours now. And these dates are mine. If I give you that, you're doing iftari on my kajur, you're doing, I'm doing iftari on your kajur, you'll get my reward, I'll get your reward. Look, look how people think. Oh, they're, they're, they're business minded of akhirah. Okay, how can I maximize my bank balance in the akhirah? And this is what he did. So he mentioned this as an example, but this is also substantiated by a hadith that we can understand. Giving a, f- a fasting person food to eat, you get their ajr. Now, Sahaba said, Oh, Prophet of Allah, we, not all of us possess the ability that we can give a fasting person food to eat. And he mentioned the same reward is for that person who gives someone a drink of milk, leban, milk, or something along the lines, or even water. You'll get the same ajr and same reward. This is how easy it is, Allahu Akbar. And that's why I, I sit with envy and I see those people, right? Ghibta. I see in, mashallah, Makkatul Makarrama. And I was watching this other place, uh, the, the, you know, in, in, in UAE, in Iran. They long Dastar Khans and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people are eating. Imagine that person. See, Allah's given you wealth, but you're using your wealth in a good way. You're earning Jannah as well, Allahu Akbar. So you see, there's also benefits to having wealth. We're not saying everyone should be poor. I know one never advocated that. People just seem to think, Molvi, poverty. Molvi, hunger. Molvi, bruv, we never advocated that. Come on, earn. Be givers, but don't be hoarders. That's all we're advocating. Like I said, okay, so I want to touch upon some things, right? There are some fadila and some virtues. We understand Allah wa ta'ala gave us Ramadan. We understand, mashallah, it's a spiritual feeling. And alhamdulillah, every day we feel this. There's something we can't explain verbally. A person may ask, why do you fast? I just get a spiritual boost, I get something, there's something that goes on in my chemistry which I can't verbally explain. But yet you're going to have like sort of people that are skeptical and they say, well, show me the benefits. Show me the benefits, what's in it for me? So okay, I mean, I, I just finished reading this one book, right? SubhanAllah, and it was an eye-opener. I, I come across this book because, it's a long story cut short, but anyway, someone recommended me this book because I mentioned something about intermittent fasting Mabayan. But do you know what intermittent fasting is? I just have the key. You know the Prophet sallallahu right? This is what he would do. Sunnah, he would fast on Monday and Thursday. Has everyone heard of this? Yeah, this is a Sunnah, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and he would fast also what other days? 13, 14, 15, the Ayyamul Bayba or Ayyamul Bid, right? He would also fast these days. He would fast on the Muharram, uh, Arafah, and so on. So every week, Monday, Thursday, Monday, Thursday. So this individual, right, he was looking into the benefits of fasting intermittently and fasting in general. And then he came up with this thing, right, this diet plan that if you were to fast just two days a week out of seven, two days a week out of seven, this itself can be a massive benefit and boost to your sihah and your health. So he went in it with skepticism first. Will it work? Won't it work? So he tried it on himself. His results were astonishing. After four months, he said that keeping strict on this plan, I managed to lose 19 pounds of weight within four months. So there was a benefit from a weight loss point of view. Okay, let me also add this in as well. You know when a person goes to the gym and you push weights? Some of you may do, some of you don't, okay? But some of you must have had a tall muscle at one point in your life, right? Where you've overworked a muscle, now you're feeling tired. Is that beneficial for your body or harm? When you've pushed yourself in the gym and your body, your muscles are feeling sore, is that growth or harm? Anyone? Growth. Why is it? The muscle tears, it repairs, it gets stronger. 
tears, it repairs and gets stronger again. And that's how you build muscle mass. So putting your body through a stress is actually beneficial for your health. Look at the brain. When the person, I'll give you an example of Hivs, a half of the student. We have the complaint because we give certain students things to memorize and they're memorizing the Quran, they're memorizing. Some of them complain, I've got a headache because your brain's not used to it. But you do this for three months, six months, one year, and now you struggle to learn three lines. Inshallah, in an hour, you'll learn three pages because the mind slowly, slowly starts to adapt. So by putting your body through these little stages of stress, it's not harmful for the body, it's actually beneficial. Let me ask you another question from this angle. Whenever you've gone through a musibah, and relate this to yourself, whenever any one of you have gone through a musibah, have you come out afterwards stronger and wiser or more worse off? Stronger and wiser. You learn from your mistakes. So any difficulty that happens in your life, you benefit from it. You do learn from it. Fasting is similar on the same way. When you fast, you put your body through certain challenges. Okay. When I say, I don't say difficulties, I say challenges. Why? Because Allah knew, look, Allah knew that Muslims would inhabit Iceland and Greenland and England. and Allah knew. And he didn't say, okay, we'll just fast for you know, half a day or three hours or seven hours. Morning till evening, dawn till dusk. And the reason for this is, is because in this, there's the maximum benefit. Now, like I said, I've only got a few minutes, so I need to kind of summarize what I want to say, right? But this, this, this guy, he, he come up with a number of really interesting findings. And it's not just him, but there's different professors around the world. I don't have time to quote every one of them, but trust me on this, inshallah. And if anyone's really interested, contact me afterwards and I'll give you a list of the references. All what I'm about to tell you is from scientific academic proof, rigorously tested, okay? So it's not just hearsay or a thumb suck. Okay, this is genuine stuff which has been promoted and now it's been put out there as the diet of the century. The diet of the century. So gone is this that diet, gone is that diet, gone is pushing yourself so much on the gym. They're saying, bruv, do 5-2 fasting and boom, your health is alright. Some of you may think, Baidi, I do 30 roza in the month of Ramadan, I don't see my waist going down, I see it increasing. Do you know why? You eat small and pakore, that's why. That's the problem. The truth of the matter is... Uh, Different cultures, different foods. I have some Sri Lankan friends, they have something called kanji, which is like a dal, like a lentil based soup with a bit of meat in it. Okay? I, I, like my local Imam Sahib, he's, like, he's silly, so they have like dal, like very runny dal with jawal, rice. Pakistanis, unfortunately, they are notorious for this. Indians as well, no getting away from the Indians. Same. Pakora, samosa, onion bhajis fried deep in tail. Bro, you've been hungry the whole day, and you're still, now you're chucking 10 to 15 samosa pakoras. What? Yar, if your health isn't going to... If your health doesn't go bad, your brain will definitely fry up and say, bro, I can't handle this no more. You're automatically shoving all those calories. It's going to naturally have an effect. That is why we don't lose weight the way they do. What this guy proposed, right? And he said that on your seven days, you've got seven days in the week, five days, eat normal. Normal, according to him, is two and a half thousand calories. Two and a half thousand calories. Subhanallah, that's like one latte for me that 350 calories. So that's already a big portion of my calories gone. But he's saying on five days, eat 2,500, 2,600, whatever it is. And on 2,500, and on the two days, you eat 600, 600. Is everyone following what I'm saying? So on the two days, you have just 600 calories. And now I'm not going to start giving you meal plans, but he gave an example that you have a couple of poached eggs, a little bit of smoked salmon. In the evening, you have a bit of fish and some vegetables. Okay, so he broke even down even the menu. Anyway, forget the food type. Let's get on to what actually was the benefit. In your body, right, guys, there's a thing called IGF-1. Insulin growth factor one. You need it to kind of like for your cells to generate in a younger age. But when you get to a certain age and your body stops growing, if you have abnormal amounts of this growth of this, this one gene, it can now start developing cancer. Cancer is a result of IGF-1 being in the body too much. What does fasting do? Fasting has an adverse effect against that. So when you fast, it actually regulates and controls the levels of IGF-1. So prolonged periods of fasting would actually be a deterrent against cancer rather than promote cancer. Do you guys understand where I'm coming from? So that's just one of the benefits. Another thing as well, right, is subhanAllah, it also has the ability to regenerate dead cells within the body. Going hungry from food, imagine. Do you know why? Because when now when your body's in starving mode, it's now got to reach for, it's got to fight for itself. So now it's going to fight left, right, and center to gain the nutrients. So the cells which are dying, they also become rejuvenated and reinvented again, re-given life because of staying hungry and fasting. But check out another one. 
You know, we have a thing called Oshugur, sugar nimariz, sugar. We have people having diabetes, right? What is diabetes? And I'm sorry to give you a science lesson, but chalo, it's all right, you'll benefit, inshallah, because it's, it's all deen. This is all deen. Don't worry, it's all deen. The body, we have something called the pancreas. When I eat something, let's just say whatever I eat, the pancreas then notices there's food gone in the body, glucose. So what happens is that insulin gets released in the body. Insulin gets released in the body, and that, food, that glucose, basically, the, it releases cells in the body, and the body stores energy. Okay? What happens is that the glucose turns into glycogen, okay? and then the liver stores it. Why? It's because your body needs a certain amount of sugar in your body, right? If it's too high, insulin brings it back down by transforming it into a form of energy that can be used later on, okay? which is called glucogen, which is in the liver. When you're hungry, the same pancreas now produces glycogen. Oh, no, is it glucagon, sorry? That then goes to the liver, reproduces that stored energy back into glucose. So basically, when your glucose is too high, insulin, to bring it down and store it into a form of energy. When it's too low, it, reduce, it produces another chemical, another hormone, to, bring the, to break it down into glucose again. If that makes sense, fine. If it doesn't, don't worry. No one's going Jahannam. This much you understand. When you're fasting, you've eaten your food at suhoor. By 12 o'clock, you've burned all your energy in your glucose. What's happening now? For a per- and that's why it's not good just to sit idle like some, like some junkie. Move around a bit. Do something, get active physically, walk around, take a, a stroll, do some physical work. Don't say, I can't do nothing. That's going against the Rosa. Rather, now what happens is when your body has used up all the glucose, what's it going to turn to now? And this is interesting because in the liver, right, it breaks down fatty acids, right, which becomes ketone bodies for energy. So you're burning fat. Because there's no glucose in your body, now your body is burning fat. But you understand where I'm coming from. That's why when you speak to someone and there's, a, there's like a, a fragrance in the mouth and sometimes an unpleasant one, you've got two types of people. Some people, their breath stinks anyway. Not them people, but after, because of the f- food effect, you, there's a hunger, there's a certain type of smell. That is because you're burning ketone bodies. You're burning fat within the body. That's beneficial, it's not harmful. What did the hadith say? What did the hadith say? The fragrance that is coming out of a fasting person's mouth is more loved by Allah than musk. Why? Because there's benefit in your health for that. And then we're here saying, oh, oh yaar, I've got to do rose. Oh, I'm only left by 25. I'm only left now 22. Oh, shukr, the first 10 days are gone. Only 20 left now. If we knew the benefit, we'd actually ask for fasting more. But you see, everything we look for, a secular view, a worldly benefit, physical benefit. There's other benefits as well. Let me just mention one or two and then finish it. You know why some people would complain of headaches? Again, because the brain also uses glucose for energy. When you have a drop of glucose, where's the brain going to get the energy from? It doesn't have it. So then it has to use an alternative source, which is the, 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 the ketone bodies, which is used as energy. That, because the brain has to make a shift from glucose to ketone bodies, that's why it can develop a bit of discomfort in the brain. Do you understand? And that it's not because you've deprived yourself of hungry and withering away. No, it just means that your brain stopped using glucose. Now it's using ketone bodies. And you're not, because your body's not used to it, that's why you get a headache. And some people complain, as soon as I eat, I get a headache. Do you know why? Because your brain just made a shift back from ketone bodies back to glucose. Ajib, Allah's made the body an ajib thing. It can repair itself, it can help. But the most, another amazing thing is that by fasting, stem cells get reproduced. Stem cells. Cells that can be used for any other cells and benefit of the body. The, uh, the, uh, the impact, for example, now on, on other parts like the lower uh, LDL cholesterol, low density lipoprotein cholesterol. Those, there was a sample of people who fasted before and after. They showed that the people who fasted had a drop in cholesterol. Not, there's two types. There's high density and low density. It's the low density which causes the heart attacks, heart failure, and all these type of illnesses, what we want to stay away from. That gets regulated because of fasting. Now check out this one. I'll just say this thing and finish. This person came to the... He said, the most radical of fasts is the Muslim fast. Okay? Because it's a complete shock to the system. It's beneficial, but it's a complete shock to the system. The more hungry you go for longer periods of time, it can actually have a positive effect on your health, not a negative one. But he said that for realistic purposes, because you can't fast non-stop. And even the Prophet ﷺ, he discouraged his sahaba for fasting non-stop. There's a hadith, he discouraged, he said, don't fast every single day. He mentioned to fast, he gave a sahabi targhib, he goes, fast this many days, this many days, this many days. It came down to this, take the fast of Dawood 
keep that in mind, Dawood alayhi salam. What did this, this, these professors come up with? They said the best fast in terms of health that would give you the maximum beneficial long term is a fast of ADF. One day fasting, one day eating. One day fasting, one day eating. This fast is the best fast anyone can do. It's funny that it's mentioned is because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentions the most loved fast to Allah outside Ramadan is the fast of Dawood alayhi salam. How did Dawood alayhi salam fast? One day on, one day off. One day on, one day off. You get where I'm coming from? Our deen is so wholesome, so rich. We don't need to look for anything else. When we are proper Muslims and follow the book as it is, by Allah you will find benefit in health, wealth, mentally, every way. It's sad, isn't it, that we had to have a scientist prove our deen for us, for us to actually feel at ease. Okay, alhamdulillah, gee, mashallah, now someone has proven our deen for us. And if it was a Muslim, there would be skepticism. But because he's a white guy, English guy, it's actually ehsas kamtari It's actually inferiority complex. Whether we like to admit it or not, we can say, what are you talking about? That's exactly what it is. So we can sugarcoat it any way we like, but that's what it is. Let's put everything to the side. I'll just finish off on one particular thing. Regardless of any benefit which we see, the best pleasure, it earns the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Irrespective of science, irrespective of this theory, that theory, this test, that test. Yes, it prolongs your life. It, has a, it can reduce the effects of dementia, Alzheimer's. There was a test done on these, te- these mice, right? It said that they doubled their life because of fasting. I'm not here to say that it can double your life and that's still yet to be substantiated because they've still got to prove it. But they said it has adverse effects, it will no, adverse, positive, beneficial effects on the likes of Alzheimer and dementia. Whoever's going to get it is going to get it, but this will delay the happening of it. It will delay it kicking in. Like I said, all these benefits one side. Why do we live and die for who? For which purpose? For which reason? For whose happiness? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inna salati wa nusuki wa mahyaya wa mamati lillahi rabbil alameen. My fasting, my, my praying, my sacrifice, my living and my dying is only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If he likes it, alhamdulillah. If he doesn't like it, I abstain. So this is why I finish off on this. I know time has gone over. May Allah forgive. But inshallah, we make dua Allah tabarak ta'ala. Give us stability and tawfiq to make amal and practice and whatever has been mentioned. And utilize the rest of our days in a positive way. Ya Allah. It's beneficial for me. You knew what was best and you gave me this fast. Not as a burden, but by Allah as a ni'mah.